today we are going to review a production monitor that sports a whooping 1500 nits brightness. That is one bright display. This extraordinary brightness comes in very handy in demanding environments like brightly lit studios and of course when shooting in sunlight. The OC 21.5 inch monitor can serve as a production, field and broadcast monitor and goes by the colorful name of LCM 215 HDR+. We will evaluate how nets matter and put OC next to displays with less light output. We will see how good we can put the nets to work with a test on an ultra-bright high-speed shooting as well as direct sunlight. Of course we will look at all the features, connectors, power consumption, transportation options, usability and everything else that matters. Maybe the OC is something that fits your demanding applications. Hello and welcome to the Media Division. Besides our mission to create unique entertainment for everybody in love with filmmaking, we sometimes test a product that we found interesting and useful for our work. If your work is anything like ours, this should be interesting and useful for you as well. If you are working professionally, you probably agree that monitoring during a shoot is extremely important. So we were in the market to shop for a production monitor and it was surprisingly hard to find something that would suit all our needs. We were looking for a larger display, probably around 20 plus inches, but smaller than 30 inches as those can get really heavy. Something that will last a while on battery power. It should have all the connectors we need, primarily SDI, but also HDMI for all our prosumer gear. And something bright enough to work outside or in the midst of really strong HMI lights. That sounds fairly simple and I expected a ton of affordable options to be in the market. Boy, was I wrong. Actually, there are very few larger production monitors on the market that also have a high bright display. Daylight visibility requires a display that sports around 1000 nits or more, depending on the circumstances. There are options from Atomos and Small HD, but prices from $4,000 to $7,000 keep those out of my shopping basket. Plus, at least the Atomos doesn't look rugged enough. But let me take a quick step back. Why would one need a bright production or field monitor in the first place? There are plenty of situations where only using an on-cam monitor or EVF is the best choice, simply for practical reasons. A 7-inch display leaves a lot to desire, quite often it's hard to judge critical focus and you shoot with focus assist features active most of the time. For me, EVFs hardly work better in that regard. You might think, hey you just got bad eyesight, but it's actually as good as it gets since I had laser surgery correction a couple of years ago. I really appreciate a larger screen on set as they give the freedom to move around independently, to punch in by simply making a step forward and most of all to be able to view and discuss a scene with your team or the client without going cheek to cheek. Even in large studios you often see ordinary TVs used for that purpose and we do that as well, as you see here. But even on wheels you are just not portable enough and lack important features most of the time. A field or production monitor is what you want in those setups. And these terms are pretty much synonymous. Field monitors being a bit more rocked for outside use. They are built to purpose and offer a whole range of features to make your life easier. And by that alone they improve your results. So what is a poor boy supposed to do? We did try a no-name monitor from Amazon and that was a waste of money. It's hard to rig, hard to power, hard to get an image on, shitty image quality. Don't torture yourself. During my research I stumbled across OC and their brand new 21.5 inch monitor. And it checks all the boxes on our list for a reasonable price of $1,350. Not only that, with 1,500 nits it's even brighter than the $7,000 small HD cine display that sports only 1,350 nits. To be fair, the small HD has a native 4K display, but that hardly matters at that size and in the field. Given that our channel sometimes tests equipment that might be interesting for advanced and professional filmmakers, we asked OC to send us a display for review, which they did. Full disclosure, we haven't paid for the display, but we will give you our honest opinion nonetheless. 
So let's see what you get for your money and if it suits your needs. Our OC goes by the colorful name of LCM215 HDR Plus 21.5. Well done marketing team. It has quite a sturdy build and should suit more demanding filmmaking environments. The most interesting feature is certainly a 1500 nits display with a native Full HD resolution. The OC offers dual SDI inputs and outputs and one HDMI, input only. A choice of battery plate, Anton Bauer or V-Log, DC and AC power inputs, dual Ethernet and USB ports as well as audio line-in and a headphone jack, a handle to carry the display and an included C-Stand adapter. A sun hood is also included and it's easily attached using simple knobs. You can attach optional cheese plates for something like video transmitters. Needing a whole bunch of thermal outlets, the OC is not weather sealed, so don't try using it under a waterfall. In terms of functions, the OC delivers pretty much everything you need and expect from a field monitor. It supports LUTs for all kinds of applications. Pretty sweet is that it comes with a log to rack 709 LUTs for most common brands and cameras, pre-installed. Even better, it has a lot of HDR workflow LUTs pre-installed. We appreciate that, as this can be confusing with all the different types of input signals in that realm. If your camera LUTs are not pre-installed or you want to apply a specific look, you can install 16 custom LUTs using a USB stick. You have all the usual exposure tools like Zebra, Vector, Histogram, Waveform and False Color. Again, the exposure indications are calculated for different cameras and there are 17 different lock curves to choose from. Nice! For focus assist you got peaking, which is essential if you use the monitor to pull focus and you want the camera to deliver a clean signal at the same time, maybe for a director's or customer's monitor. While the OC accepts 4K input, it doesn't have a feature to punch in on the screen itself. Of course, the OC is not a touch display and punching in would have little use without dedicated inputs to pan around. You got all sorts of markers for aspect ratio, center, safety, the usual. You can display audio levels for reference. And you have your anamorphic D squeezes. If you wonder, the SDI outputs will simply repeat the SDI input on the same port. So no multiple outputs and no options to send the look to a chain device. And there's no cross conversion from HDMI to SDI. There are four customizable buttons on the front, so you can toggle your favorite features quickly. There's a lot more, but we think these are the essential features. You'll find a complete description of features on OC's product website. We link that in the description. Let's talk about the killer feature, the brightness. Normal desktop displays usually have a brightness around 300 to 400 nits. Camera monitors without a high bright feature are also in that range, like here the old small HD AC7 on the upper left. The Atomos Shogun Inferno on the lower left sports 1000 nits something that is considered daylight capable, but barely. On the right is the OC with 1500 nits brightness. The difference is quite clear. At this f-stop, the OC is too bright, but if we adjust the exposure, like you would in a bright surrounding, you immediately see that the other displays are not bright enough. That is not to say that you have to use the OC at 1500 nits. You can dial the backlight all the way down. At the minimum setting, the display is about as bright as your normal desktop displays. So still quite bright and absolutely adequate for an office setup or grading suite. To see what the brightness can do for us, we stress tested the OC in two very demanding circumstances. First, in a forest, at noon, on a sunny day. This is very difficult for the camera as the scene has to cope with a lot of dynamic range between bright and dark spots that change constantly. And so does your eye. It is super important to see what you're doing and to have a display that can give you a viewable image in the changing conditions. On the camera, you see an older small HD 501 that is rated at 400 nits and that is barely sufficient without a sun hot in this context. One of the major problems with any display is the reflectiveness of the screen. A display looks brighter and more vivid with a glossy finish and even dedicated on-camera monitors often lack proper glare resistance, like you see here. The OC, on the other hand, has a matte finish that reduces the glare. The 501 has a glossy finish and angling towards the sky makes it nearly impossible to see something. 
This display has to use a sun hood, which very much limits the viewing angle. This is where the OC shines, delivering a pristine image from almost any angle. The matte screen exhibits muted glare and the high-bright display is able to power through quite a bit. Of course you can force angles and glare off the bright sky that overpowers the OC. You can always use the sun hood, but we actually didn't find it necessary at all. Even when a super bright sun hits the display directly, it remains viewable. Thumbs up for outdoor use. Next we put the OC in a studio for high speed shooting and that is every monitor's nightmare. It is just so bright when thousands of watts power through the HMIs. An iPhone Pro Max with an 800 nit screen has very little chance to compete with a 9K HMI. While we can expose a camera to make it somewhat viewable, your eyes don't work that way. Some other 400 nit production monitors on set looked accordingly worse. But as we are not into product bashing, we will not show you. The OC did a much better job here and helped the crew that worked inside this ball of light to see what the camera is getting. Besides having to power against the brightness, the real challenge of course is the glare and there are large bright surfaces in basically all directions. We have set everything on the display to maximum settings. The sun not helps a little, but this is where the limits of this display are simply because of the glare. Just to be very clear, this is a situation that basically never happens in any normal context. And if you have an angle that doesn't directly reflect a large ultra bright light source, you're cool in about any situation, even without the sun hood. We did this only to see where the limits actually are and the performance is still better than any other display we ever came across. For a production monitor, portability and power consumptions are absolutely critical. First, let's talk about powering the display. You have a normal AC input on your OC and we appreciate that it has a built-in transformer. Simply plug it in, switch it on, done. I just hate to fiddle with and carry around external power blocks that you potentially forget to take along. On the road or to have less cable hazard in the studio, the OC can run on battery power. You can choose between V-Lock and Entenbauer battery plates. Power doesn't run internally and an included DTAP to XLR power adapter is required. First, I thought this was not very elegant, but it offers the possibility to simply use an XLR extension cable and place a heavier battery, like maybe a 300 watt hour V-Lock, on the ground. Battery infrastructure is expensive and cycling batteries can be cumbersome. For the road warriors among you, weight can be problematic and large batteries can go on planes. That's why we tested how long you can run the OC on a single charge on a FlightSafe V-Lock battery. Of course, the results vary depending on your brightness settings. First of all, it doesn't seem to matter if you have a LUT or other onboard features running, at least not in terms of energy consumption. If you use the OC with the HDR LUT activated, it will automatically put the backlight into maximum setting. From here, you can't dial down the backlight like you can do in SDR modes. We used SDI, activated a viewing LUT, and for the first run, we had the backlight in minimum setting. So at one. Power draw from a power bank using the AC port was 25 watts. It shows that transformation in a long cable always loses quite a bit of power and using a 98 watt hour V-Log battery, the draw was only about 15 watts. A 98 watt hour flight safe battery did power our OC for a massive 6 hours and 26 minutes. This would still be as bright or even slightly brighter than a normal working monitor in an office environment. 6 hours and 25 minutes is very impressive as a runtime for such a large display. If you use the OC in a studio setup with normal lighting, like you would maybe for a pack shot or interviews, and you switch off the display during longer breaks, you can easily go all day on a single 98 watt hour charge. We have the same settings for the second run, but the backlight up to 7. This is much brighter than a normal monitor and good for brightly lit indoor settings, as well as somewhat bright conditions outside. The power draw on the power bank was 48 watts and the draw on the V-Log was 40 watts. This powered the OC for a good 2 hours and 45 minutes. Our third run used the backlight set to the maximum setting of 10. The power draw from the power bank was now 60 watts and the 98 watt hour V-Log draw was 48 watts. This powered the OC for 2 hours and 6 minutes. Our conclusion is a very positive here. 
if you are somewhat close to a power outlet, you can power the OC all day long by simply cycling two 98 watt hour batteries as they take about two hours to charge. A remote location allows long run times with reasonable baggage. And if you are on Everest with a field monitor, go see a doctor. On the go, you will want to protect your screen and make the display as easy to carry as possible without costing an arm and a leg. The OC uh, is delivered in a custom foam, that's this one, and it fits perfectly in a um, Pelicase case 1600. And that is the perfect solution for traveling by plane or if you have a lot of equipment on a larger truck. Of course, you will have to factor in something like $200 for the Pelicase. case. For people like me that often carry their gear themselves to set and lack space in their car, that's not really a great solution as you always need free hand to carry the Pelicase case that in itself is quite large and heavy given the sleek OC display inside. So we came up with something quite simple. We found a carry bag for a 21 inch iMac that you can simply wrap around the display even when it's still on a light stand. It offers good enough protection when you transport it in your car and also allows you to carry the display over the shoulder. For light transports, this is quite practical as you can carry other cases and bags in your hands. Cool benefit, you can leave the battery in and even the feet can stay attached. Let's give the OC our verdict. Having used the OC now on a couple of occasions and giving it to DP colleagues of mine to check it out, everybody's overall verdict is very positive. The screen is large enough for about everything. It resists glare quite well and of course it's super bright. The monitor offers all the features one would expect and need in all sorts of scenarios. It is light and can run for extended times on battery. We particularly like that it has no external power brick. There's a hair in every soup, so what is not to like about the OC? The OC is not a native 4K display, but honestly, I wouldn't have been able to even tell the difference in the situations we showed you. A punch-in feature to better judge a 4K signal would have been great though. A second HDMI input and an output port allowing SDI to HDMI cross-conversion would have been great. Also, multiple simultaneous outputs and the option to output an image with and without applied LUTs to additional crew and or customer displays like ordinary TVs would have been lovely. Let's keep in mind that if the OC would offer those features, the price would go up accordingly. That is different for the interface. Small HD and Atomos make an effort to make the interface as intuitive as possible. With the OC, that's not really the case and you can see that not much effort has been made in that regard. You will have to tinker a bit, but I'm sure with a bit of experience, it's gonna be fine. 1500 nits and the generally excellent screen, the features, the connectivity, all that makes the OC an asset that will make your life easier and improve your results. The price is surprisingly low given those features, especially when compared with the usual suspects. I love the confidence that the OC gives me. I can really judge my shots on the spot, wherever that spot might be. No surprises in post, and that can be priceless, as you probably well know. If you would like to purchase an OC21 HD upper, I'm not even going to try to get it right, we have a link in the description. It's an affiliate link, meaning that you don't pay a dime more, but you get a little something for the tip jar. I hope you found this useful. Please give us a like if you think that we deserve one. Join our closed Facebook group and follow us on Instagram to see what we are cooking. We have several epic episodes in the works and you get an occasional teaser there. You'll find links to both in the description. Hope to see you around. This is it for today. Until next time, I am Nicholas signing out with Nerdlicious Wishes. Shoot something amazing.